Let's talk science safety, shall we? Middle schoolers, you have two requirements from Moore County Schools. Yes, uh, Moore County Schools requires all of their middle school students to do these two things, to sit down with a parent or guardian and read through it and learn the safety contract, fill it out and submit it to their teacher, and to pass a science safety test. Sixth graders, you must pass that test with 80% accuracy. Seventh graders, because you should know it even better than sixth graders because you had it last year, you need to pass that with a 90% accuracy. And eighth graders, you guessed it. You need to get 100% on that test. But some of you who are freaking out right now, hang on, give me a second. You can retake it. But also, science safety is just common sense. Should you touch that? How many times should you read over the directions? Who should you notify if something happens? It's all common sense, okay? So we're gonna go over several things about science safety right now. <clears throat> if for some reason, when you get to the question, you go, oh my gosh, I have no idea what that answer it is. Uh, no worries, just pause the video, back it up a little bit, listen to the video again, and answer your question. All right, let's start with safety first, shall we? Science is a hands-on laboratory class. Yes, I know. You're saying, well, we're virtual. Well, guess what? You're going to be doing some hands-on stuff at home. And you'll have the opportunity to come into the building to maybe do, I don't know, <clears throat> a dissection or something. So, yes, it is hands-on. You learn science better when you can dig into it with your hands. You will be doing a lot of laboratory activities. And you could be using some hazardous chemicals. Probably not, but possibly chemicals and definitely some expensive lab equipment. Safety is the number one priority in the classroom. I'm going to repeat that. That is very important. Safety is the number one priority. Now, to ensure everyone's safety in the science classroom, there are a list of rules that have been developed, and I'm providing those list of rules for you on your safety contract. Those rules must be followed at all times. What times must they be followed? Say it with me, all times. A signed safety contract is required to participate in labs. That's right. If you want to be able to do any kind of activity and that includes making homemade ice cream, we do it every year, please make sure that you sign that safety contract. All right, now let's talk about some general safety guidelines. Please be responsible at all times. No horseplay, no practical jokes, no pranks. We're not in a safety or a science lab to goof off. We're in there to learn about science and have fun. And we can do that without joking around. When you joke around, when you play pranks on people, people get hurt. And in a science lab, there are things that could really cause someone to get injured. Make sure that you follow all instructions carefully. What instructions must you follow? Say it with me. All instructions. Do not play with lab equipment until instructed to do so. Will I ever instruct you to play with lab equipment? No, but I will tell you to use the equipment. Maybe I need to change the wording on my presentation, but don't touch the equipment until you're told to. Food and drink and gum, not allowed in the science classroom. You might accidentally spill a very dangerous chemical onto your food and then take a bite, and then you've ingested that dangerous chemical. What? We can't have that. What if you're chewing gum and your gum slips out of your mouth and into something that you are mixing and it splashes that chemical into your face? That could be very dangerous. What if you grab a drink and you go, oh, th this is my drink, but it's in a container that looks very similar to a chemical that you're using. Very dangerous. So no food, drink, or gum allowed in the science classroom. And remember, lab safety is everyone's responsibility. It's not just the teacher's responsibility. It's not just the person who is doing the pouring. It's everybody's responsibility. Keep the science room clean and organized. If you have a messy space, you have more chance of having an accident. You have more things to catch on fire, etc. So keep it clean and organized. 
and please notify the teacher immediately of any accidents that happen. Yes, accidents can happen. Sometimes people aren't being responsible. People aren't being careful. Accidents do happen. And as soon as one happens, hopefully it won't, notify the teacher immediately. Or if you notice that there are any unsafe conditions, and that could be a cord that's uh, a little bit frayed and you see wire sticking out of it, or you see uh, some electrical equipment sitting in water, anything that happens to be unsafe, a chipped glass, notify the teacher immediately. Make sure that you wash your hands with soap and water after all of your experiments. Yes, all of your experiments. And remember one more time, lab safety is whose responsibility? You got it, it's everyone's. Let's take a look at some common safety symbols that you might see in a, a lab or on some paperwork. So the first one here is a picture of goggles. Let's talk about eye protection. You have to wear those safety goggles when you're working with chemicals, flames, and heating devices to protect your eyes. If a chemical gets into your eyes, then you must flush your eyes with water for 15 minutes, not 15 seconds, 15 minutes. You're probably thinking, wow, Miss Call. That's a very long time. But you know what? I uh, want to make sure that chemical gets out of your eyes, okay? So also make sure that you notify your teacher, okay? All right, this is a picture of a scalpel. It's a sharp object. Let's talk about sharp objects. When using knives or other sharp objects, always walk, yes, I said walk, with the point facing down. Cut away from your fingers and your bodies as well because we want to make sure that you don't stab yourself, okay? All right, electrical safety. This is an electric plug. When you are dealing with electricity, do not place that cord where you can trip over it. Be very careful where you put it. Never, ever use electricity around water. Unplug all equipment before leaving the room. This is a picture of a hand holding a mouse. Let's talk a little bit about animal safety. So only handle living organisms with teacher's permission. Some teachers have class pets. I have Lord Montague. Lord Montague, my dog, is my pet. Sometimes he's in my classroom because I'm virtual. Uh, but we never handle living organisms without the teacher's permission. Some animals could bite. Monty wouldn't bite. He barks a lot. But some animals could bite. Some animals might carry something on their skin, say salmonella. That is sometimes found on uh, frogs or turtles. Please make sure that you treat all living organisms humanely. And hu by humanely, it means with kindness. And always wash your hands after handling animals. This is a picture of a Bunsen burner with a flame. Let's talk about heating safety. If you have hair that when you lean over, your hair uh, falls in front of your eyes, it will need to be pulled back during a lab. So you must tie hair back and any loose clothes because if you lean over an open flame, then you do not want that loose clothing to get caught in that flame and catch on fire. So anytime you're working with open flames, make sure you tie that hair back and also loose clothing. Never look into a container when you're heating it, ever, ever, because remember when you are heating substances, um, you are adding, adding uh, an increase in temperature, adding heat energy to them, and they are getting closer and closer to their boiling point, which could cause uh, some splattering. Heated metal and glass looks cool to the touch. You can't tell if you stick a glass bowl in a microwave and heat it up if that glass bowl is hot. Now, we know the microwave heats it up. But if you come back a few minutes later, you don't know if it's hot or if it's cold yet. So make sure that you use tongs or gloves or uh, pot holders in order to pick up any metal or glass container and never, ever leave a heat source unattended. So let's talk a little bit about chemical safety. So this is a bottle with a picture of skull and crossbones we usually see for poison. Make sure that when you're dealing with chemicals, you read all labels twice. Two times because we want to make sure that you didn't misread something. And 
think that you're grabbing one chemical when you're grabbing something else. Never, ever touch, taste, or smell chemicals unless you're instructed by the teacher, ever. It doesn't matter if you want to see what it smells like or if you smell it and you're like, ooh, that smells good. I think I know what it is. Maybe I can eat that. Don't do it. Never, ever touch, taste, or smell chemicals. Um, in fact, in our classes, a lot of times we're going to be dealing with food items. We don't eat those food items when we are doing a lot with them. And make sure that you transfer all chemicals carefully. This is a picture of a person wearing a glove. Uh, let's talk about hand safety. If you spill a chemical on your skin, same thing with your eyes. You want to rinse that skin off for 15 minutes to make sure you get that chemical off and notify the teacher. Make sure that you're also carrying glassware very carefully. Plants. When you are dealing with plants, do not eat the plants. I know some plants are edible. We have all kinds of herbs and we have vegetables and fruits, but we don't want to eat plants unless you're instructed by the teacher. And make sure that you wash your hands after handling them because some plants like poison ivy and oak and sumac can actually uh, give you blisters on your skin. All right, let's talk about safety equipment. There may be a fire blanket located in the back of a classroom, typically in a red container, if for some reason uh, a fire breaks out. Um, usually um, when a fire breaks out, you will notify the teacher and then I will grab the safety equipment, the fire blankets and extinguishers. But uh, just so you know there, what equipment may be located in your classroom. Um, fire extinguishers may also be located in the room. Typically they are in every classroom. Um, and it may be located in a computer lab next door, or it may be like just outside the classroom, or it may be next to a door. I you know the last classroom I was in, it was right next to our door. If for some reason you are at home and a fire breaks out, um, a lot of people are not taught how to use fire extinguishers. Now we typically tell um, students not to use the fire extinguisher to let an adult do that but a lot of adults were never taught how to use them. So here's how to use a fire extinguisher. Um, you have to remember PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. P means pull the pin. So you're gonna grab the pin on the top and you're gonna yank it to pull it out. Then you're gonna aim because there's a hose attached to this big long uh, fire extinguisher and you're gonna aim that hose, not at the top of the flames, but at the base of the fire. You're gonna aim it at what is actually on fire. For instance, if you've got a pot on a stove and that pot is on fire, you're going to aim it at the pot, but you're going to stand five to six feet away from it. Don't get close to the flame. You don't want the fire extinguisher, um, the stuff to splatter on you, but you also don't want to get caught on fire as well. So stand five to six feet away. The next thing you're going to do while you're aiming that hose is squeeze the handle. So if you'll notice in this picture here, there's there's this little yellow handle. You're just going to squeeze it to make the stuff come out. And then the last S here, you're going to sweep the hose back and forth across the base of the fire to make sure that you get it fully put out. All right, let's talk a little bit about what is wrong with this picture. Or excuse me, what is wrong with uh, these statements? So Jamal says that his teacher is solely responsible for preventing laboratory accidents. I want you to think about that for a second. What is wrong with that statement? Well, remember, science safety is everyone's responsibility. It's not solely the responsibility of his teacher. Kazana started the lab activity before reading it through completely. What is wrong with that statement? You got it. She must have, she's got to read it through, not just once, but twice before she gets started. Izzy decided to do a lab activity that she read about in a library book before the teacher came into the classroom. I know what you're saying. There's a couple things wrong with this and you're right. So she should not have done anything she read about in the library book without getting permission. And she definitely should not have started working on anything before the teacher was in the room and told them they could begin. Tyler says that the safety goggles messes up his hair and they give him raccoon eyes, so he refuses to wear them. You got it. He has to wear those safety goggles if he is dealing with chemicals or heat 
or glass. Matthew and Maya accidentally break a beaker full of some chemicals. It's an accident. But instead of risking getting in trouble, they quickly clean up the mess with a paper towel and they throw it in the garbage. So a couple things wrong here. They should have told the teacher. They shouldn't have worried about getting in trouble if it was an accident. And even if it wasn't an accident, even if it was on purpose, then safety is the number one priority. And they should never clean up glassware. Notify the teacher. Let the teacher clean it up. Cleaning it up with paper towels and throwing it in the garbage, that's not the right answer. In fact, there's a lot of chemicals that don't go in the garbage that actually don't go down a drain either that have to be disposed of in a very specific way. So please make sure that you notify the teacher. So what do you do in an emergency? What do you do? Well, first thing is to notify a teacher. So that's the first responsibility to do. If something happens like a fire were to break out, notify the teacher. The next thing you'll do if there's a fire or if there's a fire alarm, you quietly get up, you push your chair in, you walk outside the classroom door if we're in a building or you walk outside your home. Um, for the purposes of uh, what we're going to be or where we're going to be, we don't no lo we no longer have a baseball field. So we are going to walk out um, past the playground. That's where we'll be. We will quickly line up in alphabetical order if we're together in, as a class so that the teacher can take role and make sure everyone is accounted for and no one is left in the building so that when emergency personnel show up, we can tell them if there's anyone left inside. You are to remain in the line until the drill or until the fire is over and it is safe to return back inside and remain silent in case emergency personnel need to ask us questions. All right, let's go over that safety contract and some highlights. Here is the safety contract that you will be completing, but yours will say 2023 and 2024. You are to complete the student's first name and last name. That is their given first name and their given last name, whatever is on their birth certificate, whatever is in power school. Select the grade level, grade six, seven, or eight. Um, you have a couple different places for parents in case uh, more than one parent wants to complete this, but parent or guardian one, first and last name, and the relationship to that student, mother, father, or other. Also an email or a phone number where they can be reached just in case we are in a building and an accident happens. Same thing is true for parent or guardian number two. And here are the safety contract guidelines and agreement. We're going to go over these together. More County School Science Laboratory Safety Guidelines and Agreement. Students enrolled in science classes will not be able to participate in laboratory activities until this agreement has been signed by the student and parent or legal guardian. And yes, they have to complete a new one every year. Number one, all accidents will be reported to the teacher immediately, no matter how minor. If you get a paper cut, you need to notify the teacher. If you smash your finger, you need to notify the teacher. If a chemical splashes in your eyes or your skin, you're going to run immediately, excuse me, walk really quickly immediately <laughs> to a sink and you're going to flush them out for 15 minutes. Make sure to notify the teacher as well. Only laboratory activities where instructions and permissions have been given by the teacher are to be form, performed. So nothing you read in a book and not without the teacher's permission. Only materials and equipment authorized by the teacher should be used. So don't, don't just grab random equipment and use it. Upon entering the laboratory area, you will not touch any chemicals, any equipment, or any other materials until you are instructed to do so. Wait for the teacher to tell you. Never ever remove chemicals or other materials from the laboratory area. Do not take anything out of that room with you. 
Written and verbal instructions will be followed carefully. If you do not understand the instructions or how to use something, ask for help and always read them twice. Students will conduct themselves in a responsible manner at all times. Horseplay and reckless conduct will result in removal from the lab activity. And since we're virtual, we'll just call your parents and they'll come and get you. Chemical splash goggles will be used when working in the laboratory using chemicals. Safety goggles will be used in other science laboratories when chemicals are not being used. To protect your eyesight, always wear approved goggles whenever you are working with chemicals, open flames, and heated materials. Your instructor will indicate any additional situations that will require you to wear eye protection. So there's a couple different types of goggles that we can wear. We can wear safety goggles or splash goggles. Um, so those are the two different types. And there may be other times that I ask you to put on goggles when we're not dealing with heat or chemicals. For instance, like when we are doing a dissection. Students will know the location of the emergency, first aid and or uh, firefighting equipment. All containers will be closed and gas valves, and we don't have gas valves. Um, and electrical equipment will be turned off during a fire drill. And uh, like I said, don't worry about the gas valves um, because that's only for high school. Long hanging necklaces, bulky jewelry, coats, ties, sweaters, bulky clothing will not be worn during laboratory activities. So on a day when we're doing that, you either need to come dressed accordingly without bulky clothes and jewelry um, or tie them back or take them off. Long hair will be tied back during laboratory activities and closed toed shoes must be worn. And that means no flip flops, no sandals. Your whole entire foot must be covered so that nothing injures it if it were to fall on it, no chemical were to spill on it. Work areas will be kept clean and tidy. Students will always clean and wipe dry all desk tables or work areas at the conclusion of each laboratory activity. Yes, it's your responsibility to clean up your area when you are done. That is, remember, science, science safety is everyone's responsibility. Only materials needed to perform laboratory activities will be allowed at your workstation. So you can't just bring, you know, your lunchbox and water bottles and all this other stuff with you. Never handle broken glass with your bare hands. Broken glass will be removed from work areas and the floor as soon as possible by the teacher. Broken glass will be placed uh, using proper techniques in labeled sharps boxes. So they have to go in specific areas. Waste will be disposed of according to the teacher's directions. Students are not permitted in laboratory storage or teacher workrooms unless otherwise instructed. Never taste, smell, or touch chemicals unless specifically instructed to do so. Take great care in noting odors or fumes. So if you notice a strange odor, tell the teacher. And always use a wafting motion when you are trying to smell something. And that is only with the teacher's permission. If you need to smell something, ask the teacher, may I waft this? And you basically take your hand and you um, create a breeze over the top of the container while holding it away from your face so that the smell reaches your nose. Never, ever put that bottle underneath your nose and breathe deeply. No food or beverages permitted during any science laboratory activity. Never touch your face, including eyes or mouth or exposed skin, handling chemicals or laboratory equipment. Uh, hands must be washed thoroughly at least 15 seconds with soap and water when you're done with your lab activity. Never leave a flame or substance being heated or a substance undergoing chemical reaction unattended. Never bring any substance into contact with a flame unless specifically instructed because some things are extremely flammable. All flames, hot plates, and other electrical equipment will be turned off when not in use. Never allow the open end of a heated test tube to be pointed toward anyone, including yourself. And that's any open container. A test tube is just a small cylindrical uh, tube that you pour chemicals into, but you never point the open end towards you because when you're heating it up, you're raising its uh, uh, temperature possibly to its boiling point, and that can cause it to splatter in your face. Never pour water into an acid 
correctly dilute that acid by pouring acid into a water. You can get a bad reaction if you do it the opposite way, but we're not going to be dealing with acids. Direct viewing of the sun, infrared, ultraviolet light, or laser sources will always be avoided. That's because it can cause severe damage to your eyes. Only authorized laboratory activities will be attempted at home. So you are completing this, and by doing so, you have agreed that you have read the science safety rules and for the science laboratory and agreed to the following these agree to follow these safety rules while in science class. You further agree to follow all other written and verbal instruction, instructions given in class by the teacher and that you're aware that any violation of the safety agreement results in unsafe conduct in the laboratory or misbehavior on your part will result in the removal of you from the laboratory activity and possible disciplinary action. In other words, you've read everything, you agree to follow all the rules, and if you don't, you agree that you will be removed um, and possibly disciplined. Um, both parents have to, uh, or both you and your parent have to agree to that. Um, and you will do so by clicking these boxes here. I, the parent, have read it. I, the student, have read it. We also need a little additional information. Do you wear contact lenses? This is especially important if you were to get chemicals in your eye. Are you colorblind? This may be necessary if we are doing some sort of um, chemical um, reaction lab where there's a color change, for instance. So it's important that I know that so I can pair that student up with someone else. Uh, do you have any allergies? And if so, list them here and then click submit. So this is all about science safety. I heard you, hope you've learned something. If you have any questions after this Ed Puzzle, please feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to answer those questions for you.